I often speak to lay audiences, and when I do, I always say to the audience, how many of you right now are afraid that you're in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease? And everyone laughs nervously because often they come to these talks because they're anxious. And then I say, well, how many of you think you have Alzheimer's disease right now? And everyone looks around the room, one person sticks up their hand, and then everyone in the room puts up their hand. So the fear of Alzheimer's in older adults is nearly universal, and that's because some process of forgetting is part and parcel of normal aging. We forget where we put our glasses, we misplace our keys, maybe we even miss an appointment if we're busy or distracted, maybe we forget where we parked and have to go searching the parking lot for our cars. Someone once told me that the difference between forgetfulness and Alzheimer's is that if you, if you forget your keys, that's one thing. On the other hand, if you pick up the keys and you don't know what they're for. <laughs> that would, yeah, picking up the keys and not knowing what they're for would certainly be worrisome. So, you know, so what we say is if people experience a marked decline of memory, if that decline in memory interferes with function, if people forget things that are really important to them, if they start making mistakes that are dangerous, forgetting to turn off the stove, forgetting to pay bills when they were good at that, those sorts of things justify a workup. But the reality is that if someone has memory complaints or other kinds of cognitive complaints, there are very robust tests of cognitive function that are called neuropsychological tests that we've been giving to older adults for years and those tests are very useful in distinguishing the worried well from the worried sick.